another important aspect of bhagavatam is you know we have one understanding of how the lord can serve his devotees we have one understanding of what is the reciprocation of lord many times we get bewildered why the devotee is suffering why lord is allowing him to suffer he is such a nice devotee every day he goes to the temple every day he is chanting 16 rounds why still he is suffering this understanding of you know we have one understanding of what is reciprocation of lord what is lord's protection this is smashed to pieces in the bhagavatam the understanding with which we come to krishna consciousness lord's protection means we'll be peaceful shanti happy no misery no problems always blissful that is smashed to pieces in the bhagavatam this understanding because it's wrong understanding here it is mentioned the lord is always anxious to bring the devotees on the right path and there are so many pastimes in the bhagavatam where the devotees have gone through so many miserable conditions so many sufferings apparently superficially it appears for example there is a pastime of chitraketu chitraketu was a great exalted devotee and uh, he although had many many wives but he didn't had even one son from so many of his wives and he is suffering apparently it looks that you know he is a devotee why can't lord bestow him one son but he is in anxiety he is suffering and somehow he prays to the lord and the lord bestows him with one son and while he was bestowed angira muni he blessed him and says this son would be the source of sorrow and jubilation then prabhupada in the purport mentions all relationships in the material world is a cause of tribulation people don't realize it so then we know that how he got a son and then other co-wives they became jealous and they poisoned the son and the son died an untimely death and chitraketu had to go through all that lamentation and and um, distress then i'm just thinking that how although chitraketu is great devotee but he is going through all these problems and we'll see although he is going through all the distress it's in the plan of the lord the lord is taking him through all that lord is always busy trying to bring the devotees on the right path and then chitraketu once he was going uh in his you know airplane with all the other devotees glorifying the lord he sees lord shiva and parvati sitting in the assembly of you no know, other devotees parvati is sitting on the lap of lord shiva and he starts smiling seeing in this parvati in this position and then parvati gets offended and she curses chitraketu how dare you how impudent are you that you know you dare laugh at this thing and uh, he was cursed and in next life chitraketu who is such an exalted devotee if you read the bhagavatam the prayers what he has chanted so great so wonderful prayers next life he becomes vritrasura a demon and this demon is fighting with indra and if you remember in previous class we discussed that how dadichi was approached can you please give your body because indra wanted to kill this vritrasura who was a great demon and this vritrasura in previous life was chitraketu so how apparently it looks chitraketu is suffering he is a devotee he is not having a son it's in the plan of the lord chitraketu laughing at parvati although he is such a exalted devotee he didn't mean it but without having offended shiva actually not trying to laugh at him he was wrongly cursed but that was also within the plan of the lord and then because of the curse next life that exalted devotee became a demon that's also within the plan of the lord 
and Vritasura fought with Indra and next life he went back to Godhead. So how the Lord is making so many background arrangements, even getting devotee getting cursed, it's within the plan of the Lord to put the devotee on the right path. That's how the Lord serves his devotees. But we have very, very narrow understanding. And this Bhagavatam when we read, our, our knowledge, our understanding expands. So here, uh, <clears throat> Chitra Ketu is mentioning when he got cursed, O oh mother, you are now unnecessarily angry when he was cursed. But since all my happiness and distress are destined by my past activities, I do not plead to be excused or relieved from your curse. See how Chitra Ketu is an exalted personality. So he's saying, it's all destined by my past activities. Therefore, I do not plead to be excused or relieved from your curse. Although what I have said is not wrong, Please let whatever you think is wrong be pardoned. See what a good understanding it is. Although what I have said is not wrong, please whatever you think is wrong be pardoned. So from this we have to, uh, for each one of us a very important insight we have to get. In this material world we cannot expect justice. In our dealings also, there could be equations where we are wrongly chastised. For no fault of us, we are blasphemed. Somebody is, criticizes us or somebody comes and slaps us. The natural conditioned soul tendency is, no, I didn't do it. Why did you do this? What do you think of yourself? But when we hear these wonderful pastimes, we see the understanding which is there. It's all because of my past deeds. Although I didn't do anything wrong, you are unnecessarily angry. But please, whatever you think is wrong, pardon me for that. Now that's why, and when such reversals happen, somebody chastises, somebody curse, if we have this understanding of Bhagavatam in our you know, accessible to us, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. And if we see in the right context, and we see the hand of the Lord, that how Lord is trying to put me on the right path, see the hand of the Lord in our daily interactions and activities, then we will not get bewildered. And it's a very, very important, just like you can't learn swimming without getting into a swimming pool, you can't learn all these wonderful instructions unless we get an opportunity to practice it. Imagine a scenario where everything is clean, calm, peaceful, nobody is there, no interaction is there with anyone, nobody is coming and chastising, nobody is coming and scolding. What, what, what will you practice? It's just like if you don't have water, what will you swim? What will you do? Unless there is distress, where is the question of a possibility of applying the principles which devotees have practiced when they were in distress? There are so many pastimes where unnecessarily they were cursed, unnecessarily they were chastised, unnecessarily they meant the reversals. Pandvas for no fault of this, they were sent to exile. And how they tolerated, what they thought, what was their consciousness, it's an opportunity for us to apply in our lives. Chitra Ketu was cursed. He was, Mother Parvati was angry at him. How he dealt with that? It's an opportunity for us to practice in our lives when we get into these kind of situations. If we don't have that spiritual consciousness because of Nityam Bhagavata Seva, our perspective will be totally different. We look for justice, we will see that this place is not where justice is not there. Let me look for justice somewhere else. And you know, we get we, we, grass is greener the other side and from one temple to another temple looking for justice finally out of the temple. <laughs>